and recording to our live custom stream. Cannot believe that we are on episode 160 already. Fourth year of doing this, episode 160. John Hudson from True North Paramotor. Man, John, um, how many times have you been on the show? Do you remember offhand? This is the second time I've been on your show, Sean. Oh, I, I could have sworn it's been more than that. No, this is the second, second time on here. I know what it was. We, we've been giving out a lot of stuff from your... Right. That's what it is, is. You weren't on here, but we've been giving away a lot of stuff. Episode right. 160, John Hudson. Hold on one second. That was me. Bad shot. Oh, bad Sean. Bad shot, <laughs> I know, right? It's like, hey, you know what? Every once in a while, I, I mess up. Um, anyways, uh, welcome, everybody. My name is Sean Simons, also known as PPG Grandpa. Welcome to PPG Grandpa's Paramotor Podcast, clearproptv.com and paratalk.org. Tonight is going to be an amazing podcast, as always. Uh, season four we've been doing this for four years this is episode 160 i'm still i still can't believe this we got will fly uh from will fly ppg he is going to be building up the spinny wheel of winning things tonight if you haven't been over to his uh page go to willflyppg.com you'll find them there and make sure that you subscribe and hit that bell notification we also got scuba steve he also runs a podcast on friday nights you can find him at paramotordude.com on his uh paramotor slash vaping on what what time is that steve on friday uh, eight o'clock eastern standard time eight to ten eight o'clock Excellent. Uh, awesome show. We also got Linda, uh, paramomusa.com. If you want to be on the show, make sure that you hit her up. She's actually uh, playing with her pom-poms. Holy smokes, that's the first time in a long time because your your kitty usually scares your kitty. <laughs> actually, well, she, she stood up real quick behind here and she's like, the heck you doing? <laughs> <laughs> if you want to be on the show, make sure you get up with Linda Anderson. If you go to paramomusa.com, that forwards to her Facebook page and tell her you want to be on PPG Grandpa's Paramotor Podcast. But it's not about right. me. It's not about the panel tonight. It's all about John Hudson from True North Paramotor. Welcome to the show, my friend. Hey, thank you very much, Sean. Glad to be here this evening. Man, it's been a minute since I've seen you, man. Uh, what you been up to? Anything fun? Uh, you've been making paramotors and... Uh, here in the United States, you actually make American-made paramotors. Can you tell us a little bit about uh, your yourself, how you got into paramotoring, and your your company that you run? Yeah, sure. Uh, I started flying paragliders back in 2001 when I was living in Colorado. Uh, it had always been a dream of mine since the first time I ever saw somebody fly paragliders, probably in the mid-90s or so. And around 2001, in 2001, I finally saved up enough money, and that was one of the first things I did. Made a phone call to a local instructor in Golden, Colorado where I was living and uh, learned to fly paragliders. And uh, that completely changed my life from there out. Uh, then all my vacations, everything I did was based around flying. I had a great opportunity to literally travel the world and uh, lived in Asia for about seven years and got to fly all over there, flying paragliders all over there. And then around 2012, uh, after a large typhoon hit the area where I was living over there, it was uh, time to move back to America. So I did. and. Uh, it ended up going out to California and getting my uh, paragliding instructor's license, uh, USHPA. But of course, living in Louisiana and uh, being a paragliding instructor, there's not a whole lot of opportunity. And as you know, Sean, the nearest mountains from around here are about four hours away in Southeast Oklahoma. So uh, I ended up getting a towing rig. And uh, it, it just got to the point where I ran late 2014, I ended up uh, talking to, uh, to Chad Bastion out in California, who I'd known from the paragliding community. And uh, he was like, well, I'll tell you what, I'll send you a mini. Well, I ended up getting a, a mini plane top 80 unit from him. And, uh, and then I purchased that unit from him. And then the rest was pretty much history after that. Since then, I uh, started flying paramotors almost all the time. And I uh, ended up getting my PPG instructor's license around 2000, in 2015, in May of 2015, got my PPG instructor's license. And uh, since then, uh, you know, a paraglider whenever I possibly can. And I've only been paragliding a handful of times since then. Uh, paramotoring has pretty much taken over all that. It's, it's definitely my passion, my thing in life that I love to do the most. So, yeah. Sounds like we already got some questions from the super chat about your paramotor behind you. Will, what's the question? Um, yes, you caught me working on the spinny wheel. So go ahead and ask it if you see it. 
<laughs> okay. He says, uh, uh, okay, go ahead. Go, go ahead. You can. You can uh, what kind of harness um, does John have on his paramotor behind him? They're saying it looks comfy. Tony wants to know. That's currently an APCO SLT uh, that I have on here. I also offer a Dudek uh, power seat or the power seat light as an option. Uh, the thing I do prefer about the APCO is uh, it has an extra set of loops on the back uh, to where we are able to put the, that set of loops through the frame, through the frame of the actual, actually through the frame and then run a bar behind that to hold the harness in place. So instead of just running it uh, up through the loops up here, it actually has a, a carbon fiber support bar that holds it in place to the, to the actual frame as well too. So I do prefer the Atco SLT, plus it weighs about a pound, almost two pounds less than the Dudek harness. So that's standard, uh, the standard uh, equipment on most of our, on all of our units uh, complete. But if somebody does want a Dudek, I'll certainly offer it with the Dudek harness as two, well. Okay, if it's two pounds less, does that mean that it's lacking in comfort, like less padding or something? Where, how'd they lose the two pounds? Well, they, as far as I know, the, uh, the seat board is a different material. It's not wood. It's like a composite material that they use on that. And there is a little bit less padding, but to me, it's just as comfortable, in my opinion, as the, uh, as the Dudek power seat. So I've flown both of them and I, I prefer the APCO SLT personally, but that's just wow. my opinion, you know, so, and that weight difference is significant to me as well, too. So. The, the power comfort, um, you mentioned the power, was it the power comfort light? Uh, no, that one's, it's, that one weighs, I think. I don't know the exact weight difference between the two, between the SLT and the Powers uh, Seat Comfort Light. It's very similar weight difference, on, very well, similar weight comparison to those two. I'm not exactly sure. The, the but I mean, so I'm trying to figure out what the difference is uh, with the light version of the power, because I fly the Power Comfort right. and I like the harness. But do you know the difference between the two? I mean, is it just basically? What, they, what they've done to reduce weight on that is the buckles are more compact, I have noticed, and the webbing. They use a uh, like a Dyneema braided uh, for the sides and for the straps. A lot of the straps are using Dyneema as opposed to a webbing on mm -hmm. that reduce weight. And uh, so that and also the seat board on the the power seat light, I believe, is carbon fiber or uh, some kind of co composite material. It's much lighter weight than the uh, than the the wooden board that they use in the uh, power seat comfort. So. Mm -hmm. So does that harness have the, um, is it leg straps or is it the crotch straps? Uh, it's got leg straps here. Yeah, I'm just mean to, are they the straps that go over your legs or is it the ones that come up in a V through your crotch? That's what I was wondering. Oh, they, they do go up over your legs. Yeah, they do oh, okay. go gotcha. over your legs. Just like the, uh, the power seat, they've got the straps here. Yeah. And then the buckles here as well on the sides. So, yes. Okay. You build the frames here in America. Correct. What, yeah. What frames do you have? Uh, I, I hear that you got a couple of frames. Uh, well, right now we just have, it's, it's one frame. I am, um, I'll show you that guys hear that in a little while, the next generation of what's coming out here pretty soon as well too. But uh, yeah, the, the standard frame that I offer is, uh, it's aluminum, 6061 aluminum, front and back, uh, 7075 aluminum swing arms. Uh, we mill all these in house uh, here in Shreveport at our uh, production facility. And uh, spars are made out of carbon fiber. And the hoop is also 6061 aluminum all the way around. And um, the frames weight with the uh, fuel tank, with the 12 liter fuel tank, Viterazi fuel tank is 14 and a half pounds. Uh, complete with a Moster 185 APCO SLT. Uh, and a helix prop is 55 pounds. That brings it down to about 54 and a half pounds with the, with the excuse me, with the E prop. And, uh, uh, excuse me, Adam 80 complete units with uh, uh, SLT and helix prop are right at 45 and a half pounds, 45 and a half, 46 pounds complete, ready to fly. So, so the the frames that you have, are they made specific for, now I know you, you like drill them out for different types of motors. What all motors do you, do you make your frames for? Uh, well, to, I have, I have produced adapter plates and things for, uh, I've got units ready for uh, Corsair 172s. Uh, I've done uh, Nitro 200s, uh, but the fact, the standard ones that we make that the holes are drilled for, 
or the Adam 80 and the Moster 185. Because, you know, that, that's realistically, that's the vast, vast, vast majority of what people are flying these days. But I have made uh, adapter plates, engine adapter plates, that will easily fit, uh, retrofit the 172, the, uh, the Nitro 200, or any other, any other engine that you have the schematic, you know, the, 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 the whole schemes for, for the engines. I'm happy to make that to adjust for you as well too. Maybe an extra 75, 80 bucks, something like that to, you know, to make uh, engine adapter plates for any engine you, you could ever imagine to fit on there. So yeah, we do that as cool. well. Uh, we offer full customization, uh, any color, any powder coat you like, uh, which is, you know, three to 4,000 different color options available at Prismatic Powders. Uh, we do offer that option as well to any of our customers, no additional charge. Uh, and our typical production time right now is about three to five weeks to get a frame out to you. But we always try to have at least one or two frames ready to go out the door, uh, as with this one right now is ready to go. Uh, but if you're doing custom, right, you got to expect the three to five week. That's, yeah, that's right, about, about five weeks on custom stuff, typically three okay. to five weeks. Yeah, and it, it average about five weeks on those. So, yeah. But if we want one right now, you got one that you can ship us right now. I have two that I can ship to you right now. Yes. Sure. So you better act quick. <laughs> exactly. It's spring time is here, and uh, and we're also doing a uh, standard now too, complete with everything. Uh, is the off grid aviation throttle. Since I started offering these about a year and a half ago, I've not had a single customer want anything but the off grid throttle. You know, everybody this seems like yeah, that's what I want, even though it costs a little bit more. So I'm offering that standard. Uh, you know, is also another way to say uh, you know to buy American using American made products on my units whenever I possibly can. Uh, we're also another thing we're doing now is um, these tensioners uh, by a company called M square out of Vermont. Uh, they make these great ratchet strap. Hang on. Let's see if you can see that there. Uh, ratchet strap tensioners for the netting uh, that get this thing. I mean, they get it really, really, really tight on the netting as you can see. So, uh, and uh, that, those are another great thing. They're made in Vermont. So we're doing that. And the uh, off-grid aviation throttle is coming standard, included standard with all of our units. And uh, yeah, you're trying to use American-made products whenever we possibly can for all of our machines. So, yeah. Very good. Um, ben, uh, Bonnie Franz, you pretty much already uh, answered that. So you wanted to know the paramotor what the paramotor was behind you. Okay. Um, yeah. American paramotor made in American, a uh, made in America paramotor. Those aren't real common. They're not. And uh, I tell you, if I would have known all the headaches and, and troubles and back to the old drawing board type scenarios that would be involved in this going, when I went into this three and a half years ago, I probably would have not moved forward with it. But, uh, you know, most days I'm, I'm really glad that I did. I am really glad that I did. Cause, uh, we have a beautiful machine that's lightweight. Uh, it takes a beating. I've put all my students on these in the past three, three and a half years. And these things have definitely taken some major, you know, everything, you know, the typical student forget to sit down or, you know, go ahead and sit down before he's actually flying and then boom, do a heavy butt landing on it. I've had another guy stall one from about four feet and just straight drop on him. And, you know, the legs will occasionally get bent. The legs may get bent out of shape just a little bit on there. But that's the great thing about this. It's all CNC modular. So uh, for example, to replace a spar on one of mine, uh, it costs $18. I charge $18 for a spar. Uh, wow. A leg is $50, uh, you know, to replace. And that's powder coated, painted, you know, however you, however you want it done, 50 bucks for a new leg piece. So, oh. you know, as opposed to, I've seen, you know, some companies charge $280, $275 for a spar. A uh, hoop section I've charged thirty dollars for now. Uh, you know, a complete, uh, complete netting with the uh, hoop is like two hundred and fifty bucks, something like that. You know, so it's it's all very reasonably priced and affordable. Uh, a complete unit, one of the complete units. This one right here with the uh, Moster one eighty five. I'm charging uh, six sixty. And there went your mic. Oh, there we go. Are we back? Okay, yeah. Yep. Uh, six thousand six hundred and fifty, sixty-six fifty. Uh, complete units ready to fly. Um, and uh, frames are two thousand six hundred and fifty bucks as well. Would you mind repeating that? 
Yes. Uh, uh, cost. Sorry, uh, sorry. Most are units complete, ready to fly with the uh, APCO SLT. Uh, Helix prop, uh, off grid aviation throttle, $6,750. I lost my paper, I had it written down on $6,750. Uh, that's ready to go today. The Atom 80 units are $6,450. And the frame, uh, just the frame with the 12 liter fuel tank. Uh, swing arms, uh, it's 2,595. Nice. And we all don't ask them again because then the price will go up another hundred dollars. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, about I, I was thinking, was like, didn't he just go up another hundred bucks? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hit the first price. <laughs> I had it written down right here. I was like, well, we had, we had, you know, as everything has gone up, Vitarazzi has increased their prices. I basically, the only thing I've done since, uh, pandemic as far as increases go i've increased it by like three percent because that's been my production increase cost on most of my parts and whatever vitarazzi's increased their prices uh by i've had to go up with that as well too so yeah wings have went up i mean good thing you don't make frames with eggs or anything because you know god i know right <laughs> <laughs> about the price of diamonds these days almost um huh? yeah yeah Another great feature about these uh, units, I started doing this about three years ago, is this easily removable pin, the swing arms. Oh, and that comes right off. So you've got, this great thing about this is you can easily store these in the back here. Like if you're driving a pickup truck to store it or any, uh, anything like that, you can push it flat against the back of a pickup truck uh, and ratchet it down and get full, you know, not having the swing arms in your way. And as far as storage goes, and also uh, maneuverability, uh, having this fully rotating, you know, where the, the swing arms are not resting on a bolt whatsoever. Nothing's so resting on a bolt. It's, how many pieces does the actual hoop break down to? I mean, as far as the main sections there, not the five spars. Different, five different sections. Five sections, okay, cool. That's the cheapest price I've ever heard for spars, for sure. I mean, I haven't seen any paramotor company have spars for like 18 bucks. 18 bucks, you know, they're, they're carbon fiber and, uh, you know, there's, there's not much to them. There's carbon fiber spars. So, uh, I'm right. not, you know, I'm, I'm making a little bit on that. And that's another thing too, you know, I feel like for spare parts for a unit, why should I take, you know, somebody who's already been a loyal customer of mine, tripling, quadrupling the price on that, you know, to take it to the cleaners on that. Why do that? You know, so I'm, you know, making a, a fair profit on that as well too, of course, to cover my end, but I'm not, taking any one of the cleaners on any of this by any means, you know, so. Right. So being very fair and very reasonable. Uh, yeah. from here, made here in America, another great thing, you know, if you have any questions or anything, you can call me at any time. Uh, my number is 318-393-7544. Or, uh, you know, go to our Facebook page, which is True North Paramotors. Or our school's uh, Facebook page as well, too, is Louisiana Powered Paragliding. Excellent. I see another. I see another uh, frame behind you. What? What's that way back there, buddy? Let's mm -hmm. look at that real quick. This is the uh, the future. Uh, hopefully, we'll have these ready for production here in the next couple of months. It's always neat when you can look into the future. <laughs> yes. So and that's it. It's, it's taken us a little while to get here with production on these because there's just been a lot of. Uh, this is a titanium frame. Uh, so basically, what we will do is replace the. They will, it will retrofit the others as well to the older units. Uh, if you have one of our True North frames and you would like to uh, convert that to a titanium frame, uh, no problem. What we're going to do is we're offering hoops. We will be offering hoops and spars uh, made out of uh, grade two titanium, and uh, this is just a um, this is just a prototype right now. So, um, but yeah, they're grade two titanium, fourteen millimeter, uh, all the way around, uh, which you know it definitely offers many advantages as opposed to aluminum. Being able to rebend, uh, you know, if you get if it gets dented or hits, it makes any impact. You can easily, you know, with heat. Uh, shape these right back into shape just as they were. Uh, so yeah, this will hopefully we'll have these ready to go here in the next two months. 
Uh, our only holdback is getting a snap on netting. Uh, snap, like we're going to do it like a, a, a Maverick or something like that, you know, that snap on netting uh, with the uh, polyurethane tubing that goes around there. And we'll also, that, this will also offer the uh, M square uh, ratchet snap, uh, tensioning system as well, too, on that unit. So, yeah. That looks like a really interesting design. That design is to be really strong and support your harness. Yes. Is yeah. <laughs> uh, Bonnie, Bonnie Fran says she's actually got another question, but we've all wiped our computer screen to try to get that little black mark off our screen. <laughs> yeah, I was doing, doing that. <laughs> I've been doing the same thing. You got you got a mark right on your lens, right? Almost in the middle. Yeah. I was just looking at that too. Yeah. <laughs> it's not coming off. Yeah, I've been scratching my screen too. That's like, what funny. is that on the screen? <laughs> Little conversation piece there. In the pre-show things. Hang on, just make, let's see here. <laughs> that's here hilarious. Oh my god. Yeah, that's not coming off. Oh, yeah. that's gonna fire yeah. some Shoot a laser in your camera or something. <laughs> the laser will do it. Yeah. <laughs> she did want to call. Bonnie wanted to know if if you could fit a trike onto the True North Paramotors or. Uh, yes, I have had a couple a couple customers. Uh, and put you put these on trikes without any issues yes so that that print that's on the metal it's it's on the metal before you ever cut it right because that that print looks pretty cool that's on there yeah, you can yeah. barely see the design because it's far away but I, it's I laser cut oh not the actual holes but there's a design on the metal itself is that laser cut too like a finish yeah everything yeah, Oh, you're talking about the finish on here? Exactly. Yeah, yeah yes. that's that's a hammer tone powder coat. And uh, we've, over the years, you know, we've made quite a, quite a few units of these, actually. And, uh, you know, what we've learned is that a hammer tone, as far as powder coat goes, if it's a part that's going to get worn and, and rubbed or anything like that, uh, this, this hammer tone is definitely 100% the way to go. So what we do is we offer the swing arms and the front plate uh i'm pretty much exclusively you know if somebody wants a different powder coat that's fine but i will tell them look that you know they tend to wear down or you know fade off shortly but this i've had guys that have been flying for over a year and a half now with this exact same hammer coat hammer tone powder coat and it is not faded or worn off whatsoever so super durable and while it looks really cool too i think it's definitely different and sets me apart from anybody else so that's our standard uh color option and then uh for the back, what I have been doing is uh, is a standard option is, um, oh, what is the name of this? Uh, Prismatic Universe is the color, and it changes colors in the light. If you guys, if you, on my Facebook page, you can see a lot of uh, examples of this color shifting uh, powder coat and how it changes colors in the daylight. But it's a prismatic, uh, you know, it, all the colors you can ever imagine uh, hit under a certain light, it'll change into on there. So How well can you see that when you have a motor on the back like that? You can't, you can, act, with the motor on the back, you can still see that. That's why I don't do that on the front either, because when, on the front, if you put a harness on that as well, too, it, it basically makes you really not see it. But you can still definitely see it with the motor and the prop pretty clearly on the back. Uh, there's pictures of those on my Facebook page as well, too, if any of you guys uh I, I can't pull that up obviously but while i'm talking but uh yeah there's clear, well there's picture i can out. see now if you're gonna go with a titanium frame and you're gonna start producing those i can see a cost increase for that but what about that snap on netting isn't that going to bring the price way up also or that's why think... I'm, I'm figuring how to manufacture that in house right now as well so oh, okay well yeah if you can do it in house then that ought to keep it reasonable i would think yeah and i'm hoping uh we're planning for about 300 to 350 dollars more for the titanium frame versus the uh aluminum so you know the frames will be just a little bit over three thousand bucks uh you know the most three units will be just a little bit over seven seventy one hundred bucks something like that what is the benefit of aluminum and titanium? Can you tell us the difference between, because, you know, we got a lot of people out there that are listening to this that are not flying. They're going to fly soon. And, you know, maybe they don't know the difference between the difference. Well, with aluminum, uh, you know, you can sometimes get lighter weight paramotors using aluminum. Uh, the thing with aluminum though, too, is when it does bend, 
uh, it typically does not bend back into shape so easily. So once it gets bent, it's it's pretty much bent, and you got to replace that part. Uh, typically, now you you can bend back aluminum to a certain degree with that, you know, but it, 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 you're going to be able to see it. With titanium, you can bend it, and ideally, you can heat it back up and shape it right back into shape. It has uh, elastic memory to it. That is what they basically, you know. So if it gets bent. Uh, you can take a heat torch and shape it right back into the shape that it was, and it'll stay that shape. Uh, that is the one advantage over titanium versus aluminum. Uh, personally, you know, it, it, as long as you're not crashing your paramotor or wrecking it much, there's really not much different. I mean, there's really, you know, there's really not much difference or, or need to have one versus the other, in my opinion. People, though, do tend to want titanium, uh, as we know. So, um, I, that's why we're offering one in titanium as well, too. Uh, but the aluminum is a great option as well, too. And my price is so reasonable. I'm replacing parts on it. it you know, it's, it's almost it's, it's almost a no brainer to go either way. You know, so you can't you can't go wrong either way. Uh, we are just figuring that uh, also with, currently uh, my cost on titanium versus aluminum is not a whole, whole terrible lot of difference, a whole lot of difference. So but my production time and production um cost is more with the titanium because i got a specialized welder to weld the titanium parts and his time of course is a lot more money versus selling the weld aluminum so yep that's um those are the main differences uh but you can't really you can't go wrong either way versus with a titanium frame or an aluminum frame they're both excellent uh, and these have all taken over three and a half to four years of heavy student abuse and pilot abuse as well too and stood the test of time so that's good i think we have a question in the super chat will or steve tony marzano is asking uh if you if you could show the throttle sure. let us see it yeah the off-grid throttles i have one of those and they are pretty pretty cool um one of my other students just changed out his throttle to an off-grid also Yeah, here's the off-grid aviation throttle. These are all uh, made in Georgia uh, by a, a really good guy, I man, super nice guy. And he's uh, also a guy who designs uh, some of the most famous AR-15s and uh, and rifles out there as well, too. He's the chief designer, chief engineer for those. And this is his side business, is uh, making uh, paramotor throttles. Can you put it on your hand so we kind of get an idea of the... <clears throat> Yeah, this is a left-handed. Okay. Yeah. Really fit in the hand. Uh, super ergonomic, super comfortable. The uh, cruise control option is, I love that option on here, just to be able to press down on it and it locks. Just to press down one, you know, with your finger and it locks. And then when you want to disengage it, you just pull, you just engage the throttle again. Boom. It's off. And that, and that little spinning wheel right there adjusts your throttle once it's in the exactly. cruise control mode. Yeah, exactly. It adjusts, it adjusts the, uh, the cruise control. Man, that's nice. So, yeah, it's pretty, really nice. I mean, they are, they are considerably more expensive, you know, about 75 bucks more expensive than the average throttle. But uh, then again, it's once you get one, you don't ever need another one, you know. So, uh, they've... Uh, definitely been a game changer for the throttle market i don't know how many of these guys have sold they sold over a thousand of these things and for uh you know in the paramotor community that's quite a bit so doesn't make sense because i lived in georgia all my life except for the last couple of years never saw one person fly a paramotor but yeah bad apples is there the guys making off-grid th throttles there never saw one paramotor anywhere in georgia <laughs> how the hell yeah that's funny how that works sometimes isn't it it is. Um, it is 730. We've been yapping away already for half an hour, and we only have you for an hour tonight. So uh, real quick, you you have these really awesome T-shirts. Uh, yes. You gave me one years ago, and I still love it. You still uh, have one, but yes. you changed your design. And uh, can you show us your new design on your It's the same design. It's just a different, different color, uh, different color shirt. A little, little more blue than the last one. So, yeah, I've got these, and we'll be doing a, a giveaway tonight for one of these. 
Nice. All right. So if you would like a True North Paramotor t-shirt from John Hudson from True North Paramotors, make sure you say hello to Will Fly in the super chat because we're going to be spinning the wheel here in about 15 minutes. It's extra large. It's the only size I've got left right now. So something to grow into. There you go. Exactly. <laughs> Tony was asking the cost of the off grid. Yeah, they're, they're about 225 to 250 bucks, depending on what you get. Yeah, or 260, whatever, 269 there for the uh, Nitro 200. Nice. And you got the, the ones with the e-start, which is really nice. It's a green button. They also have a thing that will go around your kill switch so you don't accidentally bump it. Do you have oh. one of those things on your on, on yours or... Uh, this one does. This is not an e-start, but I know exactly what you're talking about. He just mod, uh, he just recently modified those for all the off-grid throttles uh, to where the ignition for the 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 e-start on there is more difficult to press. Should I say? Because the earlier ones were super easy to press. Uh, ask Travis Dupont. I think he's in our chat right now. Uh, I bought him a Moster prop uh, <laughs> one day because of uh, how easy it was to press that thing. So uh, he's, he's remodified those to where the e-start has like a, a, a nice cradle around it to where, you know, you actually have to really, you won't have to want to press the start button on there for it to start. So yeah, he's made those super nice, super nice e-start throttles. Uh, John says he uses the start button for his push to talk, which yeah, if you got a manual start yeah. and you want to use that button for push to talk, go for it. Yeah, that'd be, that's a great option actually. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. That's interesting. Easier to run. You don't have to fiddle around with anything on your helmet or anything like that to uh, to get that damn button engaged. That's right. That would be nice. Yeah, Travis says he's 30 minutes from you. Yeah. Close. Oh, yeah. We fly together quite often. Uh, any questions for John in the panel? Linda, any questions? Steve, Will? <clears throat> it's time for will to ask questions i've already asked a lot <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll speak uh, someone has a question well john are you planning on going to like any fly-ins or anything like that to show off your paramotors or are you just just really busy with school yeah i, I plan to make it to bad apples this year and uh i don't know if they're doing endless foot drag again this year or not but uh you know if they are i'll probably head up that way or any other uh fly-ins in the the spring and spring and summertime as well too definitely that's excellent um anybody in the super chat have you ever met john or heard of him if you met him he's one of the the coolest guys you've ever met and and uh he's just an incredible uh guy he's a really awesome pilot uh he's he'll be the first one to help you out set up your wing if if you need help he's he's really incredible uh tell us a little bit about your school john and uh you know how how many days is it and how does it all work uh louisiana powered paragliding is my school uh based out of shreveport louisiana and uh offer a follow we follow the USPPA syllabus uh, i've been an instructor since 2015 I've probably trained I 40-ish, 40-ish to 50 people over that time, something like that, I would imagine. And um, yeah, it's a local, local school. And I typically train people within an hour or two hours of here, uh, just because of their scheduling and my scheduling as well, too. It tends to work out best. Uh, you know, we typically train on the weekends. If I've got somebody within an hour or two hours of here, happy to work with them on the weekdays as well too so that's that's typically how we do it as opposed to offering like a seven or a 10 day course or a two week course uh just go by uh whatever the student schedule allows and whenever their time allows to come here you know sometimes that'll take a student six months uh sometimes that'll take a month it just depends on you know their availability and my well my i'm available pretty much any time to teach so whenever they are ready give me a call we'll meet out at the field and just start knocking that syllabus out and start getting that done. And typically, you know, we do uh, PPG one uh, during the time that you're in the class and then, uh, you know, work up to PPG two, come back, uh, you know, and start seeing your flying as you progress. And then we'll start checking those things off. And then once, you know, typically 25 to 30 flights, somewhere in that range, I feel like a person is, is ready you know, or, or more, just depending on the time and, you know, the, the amount of flights and the quality of flights and stuff that they're getting as well too. 
uh, then they're ready to take the PPG2 test and to qualify from there. So that's basically, that's basically how we do it. I have had several people from like Dallas, uh, three, four hours away come in for training and happy to work with someone like that too. If they want to come in for two, you know, if somebody's from further away from out of town, like four or five hours away, what I'll typically do is have them come for like a Thursday through a Monday, a Thursday through a Sunday. And we'll do that done. And, you know, probably the end of that weekend, we'll get our first flight in after three to five days of training and then go from there and have you come back again and uh, do that two or three times. And then you'll be ready for your PPG two from there. So yeah, we follow the syllabus and uh, you know, my years of knowledge and everything seems definitely help on that. And uh, very uh, patient and very patient with the students and never in a rush to hurt anybody. I typically like to train two, maybe three people at a time. Beyond three, I find that, you know, I've trained like five or six students at a time. It just gets to be too much going on, but you know, somebody feels left out. So I, I, I keep the numbers at like three or less right now for my, you know, if I'm doing the training, three, three students to one instructor, so yeah. Okay, Will Fly, uh, there's another question in the Super Chat, sir. Yes, there is. Um, how about the, um, uh, are you, let's see, are you going to Torchport for Memorial? Torchport? Torchport. The flying. I'm not familiar with that fly. <laughs> Where is that? Michigan. Oh, Michigan. No, no, I highly doubt I'll be up there. Torchport what? Air Park. Air Park. Yes. What, what weekend is that? Memorial weekend. A Memorial Day weekend? No, I, I, I plan to go into Bad Apples uh, in May, and I've got something else scheduled for Memorial Day weekend, so I highly doubt I'll be up at that Darn one. it, because I'm going to be there. Darn <laughs> it. <laughs> I haven't heard of this fly-in. Is it a newer fly-in? I don't, I don't fly, but I'm going to go. I'm going on my second tandem uh, at Torch. Okay, nice. Eric and Jade took me up last year and oh, yeah. now i now i'm hooked so i'm going back yeah i'm going back in may i'm going to go up again oh wonderful wonderful so john i'm wondering how are you getting the word out there about your paramotors is it just word of mouth i mean you have a facebook page but how else are people going to be able to find you i mean are you promoting it at fly-ins or, or how's yeah. that how's that going fly -ins, facebook uh advertising like that locally as well too um you know, I'm not really out to take over the paramotor industry by any means. It would be nice, but, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's at a comfortable pace right now. You know, if we can do, uh, you know, a unit, couple units a month, something like that was, you know, really about, you know, where we like to be. Uh, okay. although, although I'm certainly looking for, uh, any schools or anybody else out there, you know, that would like to, uh, expand their lines as well too. We're certainly open to, uh, you know, to working with schools or, uh, you know, other dealers as well too. So, yeah. Cool. Does he have a web page? I just posted his Facebook page, Tony. Yeah, yeah. American <laughs> Made Paramotors dot com is the, the the website. Uh, we do need to update that. Uh, so yeah, I'm so hoping hoping to get with my uh, web people here this next week. Maybe uh, meet up meet up with them here on the road here this next week, and uh, get some just get some stuff uh, updated on there. So yeah. Steve, are you able to do a screen share on? with his school page or his Facebook page? I do have his Facebook page. Um, I can share it. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Share screen and there, I think. Share sound, well, there's not gonna be any sound, but there's his Facebook page right there. Cool. So, you can see right here he's got 731 followers y'all need to go over there and follow him over on this on his page i mean you can see right here he's got all his pictures of his paramotors i mean feel free to look through those and um but like like john said he uh he'll do custom work too so if you like hey i want a lime green frame for my for my frame then boom there you go no problem yeah and i've done a lot of custom work for people you know that had something they wanted to match you know some other they wanted to match their car or they wanted to match something else for example you know certainly happy right. to, happy to do that not at all a problem i not like this good. video is that so that's showing you uh about the way it it looks like is yes that what you, oh, okay yes. yeah they were weighing one zeroing it out and 
let's see what that one comes in at. Oh, 14 point. Yeah. 14 and a half, 14.6 pounds. That's the, uh, the average weight for the frame with the fuel tank. So nice. Nice. What size, fuel tank? What size, yeah. What size fuel tank is that? It's a 12 liter. The standard Vitarazzi 12 liter fuel tank. Okay. Oh, uh, there we go. This one's got the motor on it. 54.4 pounds, which is actually pretty light. I think most people, you know, for a paramotor, that's that's that is that's good weight. <laughs> it is very yeah, yeah. It's a very respectable weight, and that was something you know when we were designing it, uh, looking at everything, looking at all the competition as well too. How can we keep this thing super strong yet lightweight as well too? And uh, and so far we've succeeded on those numbers. I think those are very good numbers. Another thing we did, which nobody else in the industry is doing, uh, are the legs. When we went to design the legs on these, we uh. Let's see here. Let me uh, do this so we can see what he's doing. We shaped most legs, as you know, on a paramotor frame are completely flat, right? Mm -hmm. Right. So what we did is we decided to shape them more like a human foot, like ergonomic. As you can see, it's got a curve here, right? Like a like a like an actual foot instead of being flat. So that has given the frame and itself and the legs exponential. Uh, increased strength as far as uh it's not flat so when it lands it's it's ergonomic just like a foot so they, they tend not to fold and to, to, to break or to dent up uh near as easy as most other frames would so uh, that's been another another cool thing we did that i don't think anybody else, else in the industry is doing and like i mentioned earlier the cost to replace those things in case they ever do get bent or broken uh, in a crash, it's super cheap, like 50 bucks a leg. So, yeah. What, was, oh. what kind of uh, trike can those legs fit on? Like if you want to do a light trike with that? A light trike, I have, uh, I have had a customer use the uh, retractor trike uh, before and also the one that, uh, oh, what's the guy in Minnesota that makes uh, all those parts, Paracruiser or... Uh, Sky Cruiser Industries. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I've, I've had those, those, I have a customer put them on a retracted trike and a Sky Cruiser uh, trike before as well too. What what plate would you use for a tractor trike? The Skymax? Uh, Skymax or the Uta or the, uh, I believe the, yeah, the Uta plates are the ones that fit the best on that. Uh, yeah, yeah. And you, you know, if you contact, uh, Sky Sports or whoever he knows, he knows he that's who the guy went through on that one. So yeah. But I believe it was a Yuda. And then uh I've had the guy that used the um um Sky Cruiser trike. He came up with a cuss. I could show it to you guys if you want. I don't have it in front of me right now, but if anybody wants to message me or email me, I could certainly show you the system that he came up with to mount it to the trike, which is really impressive, uh using the legs and a cross brace as well, too. So yeah, he's out of Oklahoma and had Good luck with his. So. Pretty excellent. Very, very interesting. Lots of information. Uh, American made paramotor here in the United States. John Hudson, his school down in Louisiana. Um, we have a spinny wheel winning thing. John is going to give away one of his XL new color t shirts, not not the original. I, I still, these, I love the OG ones. I mean, these, these are great, these, these are wonderful. And uh, make sure if you haven't done so already, say hello to Will Fly in the super chat. Let him know that you are here. We're going to be spinning that in just a moment. So um, if whenever you're ready to put that up, Will, Linda Anderson is going to say hello to everybody in the super chat and say hi. Don't forget to unmute yourself, Miss Linda. She goes, oh, yeah, that's right. I'm on mute. There you now go. I have to get permission <laughs> to unmute. <laughs> <laughs> got a lot of people in here wow. Look at all the people. that's this the is most really beautiful awesome. spinny wheel i've ever seen <laughs> next to sean's of course you know no this Sean is the, this is this is the spinny will will there you the go i love it spinny will. Will. yuck yeah <laughs> okay let's get on to business here now everybody so i'm gonna stick i'm gonna do a shout out to all my chatters welcome welcome monday night love to have everybody so we got tony marzano running to the sky or i can fly P pg <laughs> my cat's moving this john wayne cowboy kind of goodwill 
Paul Marzano, Michael Jasper, Flying Flamingo, Jay, yay. Bonnie Franz, hey, Michigander. We got Kramer in the house. Hi, Linda. We got Guardian Service Dogs. Okay, you got Tony in twice, I think. Yep. Yeah, Tony Marzano at the very top and right down there. Uh, That's just, why I'm here tonight. Very yes. Good. Yes. And then my second set of eyes, Sean. Thank you, Sean. You, you know and, what? You, and Tony's always saying that it's rigged. So, yeah, we kind of rigged it for you, <laughs> but now we unrigged it for you. That's right, Tony. <laughs> and then we have Deweese Milstead in the house. Hi, Weezy. We got Harrismith 101, Mark McElroy. Hey, what's up, Mark? We got Next Batman. That's a cool name. We got Goldie Thief. We got PPG, the other Nick. We got Jen C. Hey, Jen, what's up? Kenneth Kidwell, Travis DuPont, A Lines, James, Bill H. Hey, James, James Beville, Marco Franco, and Doug Harris in the house. What's up, Doug? And the Kirkwood. Hey, Andy. We got Wallace Thunderbird and Daniel Roush. Welcome, everybody. Good luck. And let's right. spin away. You, you faded out, but you also got Angela Preslick and Wallace Funderburk. I faded out. And here I'm, say, out. I'm sitting back, so I'm not screaming. <laughs> I faded out. <laughs> not me. I ain't no fader. <laughs> <laughs> I'm no fader. I'm no fader. <laughs> All right, All right, shuffle, shuffle, see. shuffle. Who's going to win tonight? All right. Shuffle, shuffle, shuffle. There we I'm go. going to say... Got to wait till it starts. Okay, well, I'm trying to think who's going to... Okay. Did okay, you... you ready? Did you get... Maybe it'll be ready? Bill H. Hell, did... he flies one, so... Did you get uh, Paul, <laughs> Paul Marzano? Because uh, I see Paul Marzano popped no, up. Maybe that's what I did. Uh, maybe that's what I did. I see Paul Marzano in there. Yeah, he is here. Okay. He is there? Okay, okay. Yeah. Gotcha. All right. <clears throat> All right, so are you ready? Okay. Ready ready you are. Are. Up. I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna pick uh Travis DuPont. Because it's I'm always rigged say... for him. He already got one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, did he? Say... he got one, yeah. Hopefully somebody that don't have PPG, one. Will we... the other Nick. <laughs> yeah. Somebody that doesn't win often. Let's let's it let it be someone that doesn't win often. Ooh. Can't run into the sky. That's funny. Close. Oh, come on, Close. come on. Miss the Oh, is it gonna stop on Guardian Service Dogs? I do you believe it is? Yay! Oh Congratulations. Right on. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Right. Guardian service dogs. Cool. Hey. All right. How does Guardian Service Dog get up with you, John Hudson, so he can get or she can get your uh your version 2.0 shirt? Yes. Uh the, probably the easiest way would just message me on Facebook at True North Paramotors. Or shoot me a text. Oh, there we go. Yep, they're still in chat. They say woo. So there we go. <laughs> cool. All right. Tell you what, uh, let me see if I can see them in chat. And well, I can't see them here, but yeah. Congratulations. That's awesome. I don't even have a 2.0 version. I, I got I got OG version. Yeah, I'll get you one next time I see you. I I'm making I I've, I've got rid of all the other ones I had at um uh, endless foot drag this past year so i had about 50 of them made up and uh gave away all those uh this past fall uh yeah this past fall there's so. his facebook page again uh guardian service dogs if you need to be able to find it that'll take you right over there to it and then just, yeah, just shoot me your address guardian service dogs and i'll get that out to you tomorrow or uh wednesday cool that's the shiniest prop i've ever seen it's just like whoo it's so pretty <laughs> <laughs> prop oh yeah because of the stickers too yeah very pretty oh, yes it yes. makes that spot go away too oh good there's no black the, yeah, yeah the black. <laughs> oh, oh right. yeah that's true <laughs> it, it, yeah it kind of blends in now 
That's funny. Yeah, brand new, brand new True North Paramotors unit. Uh, it's ready to go. Weighing right at 54 and a half pounds. Uh, a perfect, awesome, lightweight machine made right here in America. You can call me at any time at 318 393 7544 with any questions you might have whatsoever. Happy to answer them for you. Uh, anytime I'm here for any of my customers at any time. So that's another thing I do love about doing this is being able to keep it on a local and personal level with people as well, you know, to where I got, I got a guy in Alaska and he calls me about once every well, once a month, it seems like just tell me how much he loves his paramotor and how much he enjoys flying it, you know, and that, and that to me makes this whole thing worthwhile is to be able sure. to be on a personal level with my customers and to be able to keep it at that way as well too. So uh, yeah, if anybody's in the market for a new paramotor, looking for something made in America at a very reasonable and affordable price, please give me a call or look us up at any time. We're always here for you. That's amazing. All those parts on the back of that paramotor. I'm just looking at them like, what's that? Oh, yeah. That's a muffler. Yeah. <laughs> I know where the gas tank looks like. <laughs> I know. See, I, I can always say, well, that's the gas tank. See, I know that much. <laughs> and you know the prop. You know the prop, right? I know the prop. Yep. Do, you, do, uh -huh. do you know the uh, the air box? The air, no. The air box. Air John's, box? Yeah, John's pointing to the air box. See at the very top there? Yeah. Okay. What's That's that for? The air comes in, it's filtered, and it goes into the carburetor. That that way you don't get, you know, sand, dirt, and dust into your machine, which is not really good. No. Very interesting. Bill H says he's going to contact you, John. He needs new netting. All right. Tell him to give me a call. All right, there you go. That's a, that's a really good question. The netting. Yes. Um, for, for me, I really would like to see, you know, an easy replaceable netting that you don't have to, you know, it, you, I mean, uh, a lot of them, you have to rivet it, right? So, yeah, no. yes. Yeah. So, I mean, and that's, that's kind of like the normal, the normal thing, but I'd love to see like an easily replaceable netting that doesn't cost $500, like, you know, the Parajet one. <laughs> exactly. And that's why I'm doing another reason why I'm, uh, we're moving forward with titanium production as far as that goes and, and uh, getting the, the snap on netting figured out. Uh, because I guarantee you, if I, once we start manufacturing these here in the United States, we will offer these as a replacement netting for, let's say that brand that you just mentioned, or whatever else in <laughs> yeah. uh, a, like a much more reasonable price than yeah four hundred and eighty dollars or four hundred and seventy dollars for literally uh i mean i don't want to say how much that actually cost but now yeah. to figure out actually how to slice those things and to get those holes evenly in them like they do that has proven to be a slight challenge i won't lie so that's our it's only beautiful challenge. there's no question about it that is a yeah. beautiful you know it makes the it, it works. It's a nice system, but it's it kind does. of pricey. Yeah, it definitely is a little pricey. And even <laughs> and even the other option, the alternative option is about two hundred and seventy five dollars uh, for a company that makes those in uh, uh, East you Florida. Might, you might have a problem there, John, because if you can make that net to fit that other company's paramotor, uh. you might be a little too busy to make that many quick enough because I guarantee they'll come to you to buy the net. They're like, I'm not buying $500 net. I want John's net. Right, right, right. Yeah. So yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's why we're, uh, trying to figure that out pretty quickly hopefully it's a little more challenging yeah. probably than it sounds because i mean not only you know you have the netting and all but the surface has to be smooth enough not to grab lines exactly <clears throat> so yeah. yeah it is a little yeah. bit of a challenge yep 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 that has proven to be a slight challenge but We've gotten this far with the titanium, uh, you know, to where we have a working prototype unit as far as that goes, minus the netting. And that was definitely a, a huge challenge as well, too, because the welding, uh, you know, the weld titanium, it's uh, it, it takes some skill for sure. And we had to go through about, oh, 18, 17, 18 different pieces, uh, you know, where I had to cope them and then pro place them together and to get my welding guy to try to figure out the temperature, the timing and all that stuff, which uh, wow. a couple of Saturday mornings and uh, a couple 12 packs of beer for him. And we finally figured it out. But 
but uh, <laughs> <laughs> so it's all. It's I think all. you can. I think you can pay welders in twelve packs of beer. I think that's the. I think that's the going rate. Yeah, uh -huh. it is sometimes sometimes it helps. It definitely helps. <laughs> easily motivation for him so that's been good and i'm so lucky and blessed to uh to have the, the the people that i have that i work with and david uh the guy that has a shop that i operate out of i mean this guy has been i owe him so much gratitude and a debt of gratitude uh for helping me out with this whole project and for being patient with me as well too because uh there's been a lot of uh uh you know forward steps and a few steps back you know making paramotors it's not as easy as it appears a yeah. lot of fitment issues, a lot of things. No telling how many proto different prototypes I've had to go through to get it right and dialed in and the fitment and everything on it good now. So, yeah, yeah. Yep. Are, are all the nettings designed the same? The nettings, are they all designed the same or or are, do they come in different colors? <laughs> they, they do. You can get different colors. There's a guy in Canada that does make, uh, that, that, that's, you know, his side job is he weaves netting. And, uh, you know, he offers them in different colors. Uh, I found the netting I use for these is uh, uh, made by a company that uh, the show Deadliest Catch, uh, the Alaskan fishermen people, the same mm. company that makes a lot of their netting. Uh, so, yeah, yeah. Okay. I know. I tell you, I almost want to touch it because, like, is it real? Is like flexible? Is it soft netting yeah, kind of thing? The netting I use is a pure Dyneema, uh, a, a solid pure Dyneema netting, which is you know one of the strongest fiber, the strongest fiber that I know there's possibly. It would have to be there. strong, huh? yeah. Right, right. And now for the for the snap on, we're going to use a different type of netting because this one won't work for that. So yeah, there are different types, and it gets it gets a little complicated. And that was one of the hardest things to source uh, when making these things for sure. That took probably the longest mm. amount of time to locate okay. so. so so everybody everybody has netting on it's a, it's a safety thing that you have to have that netting on the back right or some people don't yeah either netting or uh you know other a couple other companies use uh like a fishing line that they they weave in different patterns and it, it basically anything to block your your arm your hands from getting pulled back into the prop mm. Or, okay. and, or your, your torso, for example, would be the next thing to go. So uh, yeah. yeah, anything to block and anything to keep your body from touching that spinning yeah. blade. Of death. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Interesting. All right. Well, John, thank you so much, buddy. I definitely appreciate you. Um, definitely need to go down and see you and and hang out with you and fly some of your paramotors. Please do, Sean. Anytime, or I'll head up to Little yeah. Rock sometime soon. Absolutely, yeah. come over here and yeah. uh, bad apples. Yeah, I will be there, Will. We'll see you there. Are you in Florida? I'm in North Carolina. You're no oh, you're in North Carolina. Okay, great. Great. Very good. Awesome. Awesome. You guys, thank y'all so much for having me. I really enjoyed this past hour spending it with y'all. Yeah. And we thank definitely you, appreciate you, John. And thank you so much for yes. donating that shirt. That was pretty awesome. Beautiful. And thank thanks you, for making a paramotor frame USA. Yeah, American made. USA. 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 <laughs> we need more stuff made in the usa to where we're damn right. prices can come down because right. everything right. america made is expensive because mm. it's never made here <laughs> right. or it was 25 30 years ago and now it's all <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah John, you're welcome to drop by anytime okay thank you know so where much. to find us on monday nights i Just will come on in we will i will y'all I won't be such a stranger anymore. Good to have Excellent. you. John, real quick before you go, tell us your dot com and uh, phone number. How do we get up with you? Okay. Yeah, uh, AmericanMadeParamotors.com is the website. The prices need to be updated on there. I will say that. Uh, we plan on doing that here in the next couple of weeks. Uh, AmericanMadeParamotors.com, 318-393-7544 uh, is my phone number. Look for us on Facebook at True North Paramotors. And also Louisiana Powered Paragliding is the school on Facebook as well. So excellent. Thank you all very much. And thank you, John. Have a good one, buddy. Have a great night. Thanks, y'all. Oh, John, wait. Yeah. We need to do a thumbnail. Okay. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, my God. I fell asleep at the job here. Oh, yeah, you did, girl. Holy smokes. <sighs> all right. I've been like so mesmerized by the prop and the whole yeah, thing. I know. And the air box. Oh. You know things now. Right. Ready? <laughs> one, two, three. Three. There we go. Got oh, it. Awesome. All right. Thanks, John. <laughs> right, John. He almost got away. That would have been terrible. <laughs> well, we didn't get his yeah. mom out. I would have felt really bad. I know. It's <laughs> like, how do we prove that we really had him on the show? <laughs> I, <know. laughs> I think the hour of throwing will do. So good deal. 
<laughs> oh, did we figure out what the secret word's going to be, or is that going to be? Uh, yeah, we're, we're, we're gonna, we got to let John go. He has to leave. So, okay. John, thank right, you yeah, again. True North for next week or whatever y'all want. Yeah. All right. All right have a good one, bud. You have a great night. Thank you. Yeah. Bye. All right. For those of you that were here last week, um, we had a secret word. If you are the first one that types in that secret word, I'm going to send you a bunch of Clear Prop TV stickers. So first one that remembers the secret word in the super chat. Man, I tell you, I really had a good time tonight. Uh, it was really good. Learned a lot of stuff. Boom. Somebody's already got it. Oh, he sure did. Dang. Who's that? Holy moly. Somebody's on it. James yeah. Belleville. James. That's what I see on my chat. Michael Jasper was right behind him and Bonnie. Yeah, Trump. they were they were close. Ooh, they were trailing him, huh? <laughs> they, they were like <laughs> they literally typed it in like the time YouTube has their delay. It was like by the time you said it, it was on there. <laughs> yeah. like boom, boom, boom. The beast. Yeah. The beast is the uh the new tandem trike that I got from Florida last week. And uh uh so James uh you won some stickers so go over to paramotorarkansas.com uh find the stickers put it in your cart then text me 501-747-3558 let me know that it's in there deweese i am this close to being able to get your stuff out from last week sorry i haven't been able to been kind of busy but you do have it in your cart i will get out to you as soon as possible um eight o'clock already man i tell you what hours just they fly like paramotor pilots, man. Let me see those stickers again, Sean. There was one that I, that balloon one. The okay, balloon. So, you want the balloon. <laughs> so Jim makes these. That one. Oh, yeah, right? I got that one. So, okay. so these right here from carepp or careppg.com. Yeah. I send these out also because yes. Jim has really helped us out as far as making these a really amazing stickers. Uh, these stickers you can put on your car on the outside and they don't fade away. Mm -hmm. And the ones that I got made not in America uh, through through Amazon, uh, you put these stickers on and they fade away to, to almost nothing. So these are great indoors. Yeah. But I have Jim, one on my on my uh, the top of my laptop. I put the sticker on it. Jim makes yeah. these things to last. Yes. It's really awesome. So yes. indoors, outdoors, and yeah. yeah. Send these out for for Jim. So. I got those. Damn, I don't think I have any color left in my beard. Sean's next. <laughs> He's getting there. there. He's he, yeah. You got a little bit, then it'll be like this, where it's just freaking Santa Claus. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, my my plan. I'm is... older than both of you. Mine's invisible. <laughs> He's there you it go. Off. He's got there the special go. beard. Yes, the low maintenance. Invisible. There's no way Will is older than I am. There's no way. He's 63 oh, and a half, man. You just can't. Oh, no, he just is can't not. Tell me because he's shaved. <laughs> <laughs> 63 and a half. <laughs> when you're 63, man, you don't count the half. <laughs> I mean, when you're eight, you count the half. <laughs> <and a> <laughs> I'm I'm 583 <laughs> months old. <laughs> Oh, man, I always have a really good time doing this stuff. So, all right. So our secret code for next week, how many people we still have here? We have what? 37 people still. Cool. Wow. Um, man, this so, was fun. so first of all, Travis just said Jim went to Mexico. Um, we'll probably near, never hear from him again. And yeah, he's uh, hanging with Kenny Chesney right now. Uh -huh. <laughs> no shoes, no service. Yeah. He went he went down there and is touching all the cacti. Nah, I saw his nah, last nah, video where he's nah, touching nah, cactus nah, and nah, seeing nah, it bloom. Nah. Pretty cool. Um, but anyway, no, next week. How about we use True North for John Hudson? That's our that's our that's, that's code true for North. Next. True North Paramotor or True North, either one would be fine. Probably True North because that's the quickest to type, right? Yeah. 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 So they don't have to do check spell, you know. I think Jim's going to get some video tomorrow of him flying in Mexico off the beach. And then we'll, you know, if you watch him on his YouTube channel, you'll be able to see the video. If he posts it tomorrow, I don't know. I, I hope so. It's really nice that we get to, to follow his adventure from Canada a, all the way through America down to Mexico. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. 
Wish I could take that yeah. kind of time off. I'd be gone. I'm out. You can, you can <laughs> just just take some time off and go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, why take not? a month why? off. Don't worry about bills or nothing. Just do yeah. it. Yeah, <laughs> no, she two, two weeks now. She, Munchkin would have that doghouse all nice and custom built for you. <laughs> there, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Got you a shed you can stay in. Yeah. <laughs> Bill oh, H says it's true north. Does that mean he's the first? <laughs> Put true north in the chat. Remember that for next week. You, oh, I see, yeah. Bill. You have to write it down so you remember it. There you go. Yeah, I know what he's doing. <laughs> mm -hmm. There you go. Bill H, when are you going to be our guest, dude? Jeez. Yeah, I know. Before I'm in the nursing home, you know? <laughs> well, we'll get to see you on your birthday, Bonnie. If you show up next Monday, we can all tell you happy birthday then. Oh yeah. Who's what? Birthday? What? Yeah, her birthday is next Monday, she says. So Ooh. whose birthday? Bonnie Franz. Oh Our Bonnie. Franz. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool. They're gonna be down here in April training uh track training. April. Cool. Mm -hmm. Party at Bonnie's house, Hopefully. birthday girl. Hopefully it'll be nice and uh, butter smooth air for the entire time that they're here and they'll get tons and tons of flights. It's been rainy and cold and foggy and wind advisories. I don't think I've ever seen such a thing in my life. I mean, since November of this last year, it's just been crap. The whole polar system is out of whack right now. Once that yeah. jet stream changes and pushes, We'll be we all we'll be normal about two think more the, weeks. Think of the we'll people in California. Holy moly! Yeah, they're I know. <laughs> freezing <Blizzards>? over there. <laughs> Blizzards? I've never heard of anything like that before. Well, well I thought I would share the wealth. You know, I'm like, you know, I talk to Mother Nature. I'm like, California needs some of our snow. Yeah, well, so was... she's like, okay. Don't and, do that. Don't do that. Tell her. Tell her. Put it back. And then to Robert's me. like, "Thanks, Mom. Thanks a lot." Yeah. <laughs> put it back to nice. <laughs> um let's see anything else going on with uh will or steve or linda i mean we we did a quick introduction because john had to go in an hour we couldn't hold him here you know against his will for three hours like we normally would yeah no, he was on a schedule yeah. a schedule a schedule no this would i may be on a fun. skeleton next week if uh, it depends on how much because we're supposed to start moving we're supposed to move on the first of march which has been postponed until March 2nd. And we're going to start moving stuff. But what I'm going to try to do is leave the computers and stuff here until after maybe the shows next week. And then right after that, move everything. <laughs> you, know, you know you can use your phone if you want to. Yeah, that, would, that would suck. But no, you just kick back so. wherever you are. I mean, go, you know, take that month vacation, go to Mexico, hold your phone <laughs> up. Margarita. <laughs> Margarita in one hand, your cell phone in the other, ah, and from the beach. The and do your show. Absolutely. I mean, go. I mean, you know, Jim could have done the same thing, but he's just having way too much fun. So yeah, he is. Yeah, he must, is. Must be nice. He's gonna have a lot to talk about when he gets back. Yeah. He might well, have to be our guest, whatever. <laughs> well, not really. I mean, he's had an adventure. Yes, he yeah. has. Yeah. Um, do we, uh, as far as guests and stuff, Linda, who do we, um, what do we got going on for the next uh, couple of weeks? Do we have guests lined up or do we have any blanks, uh, spots where we can throw Jim in? We've got or, or we, next we Monday, of... we have, uh, Larry Schumart. I'm going to, I'm going to send out, you know, how I always remind him and stuff, but I don't want to give away all my secrets. How yeah. I do things, you know, I'm saying. You, but you. um yeah i'll I'll give more detail about him but yeah so far got him oh, lined up on monday and then uh the rest of the guests i'll talk about later with you guys okay but we're we'll we're all booked right we don't have any open spots over the next couple months right we're booked um i have to grab my calendar behind me okay. so give me one second okay give me one second so will what's uh new with you yeah uh not uh, not much new, but I can tell you tomorrow night, 8 p.m. Eastern on uh, Paramotor Hangout, we have a very special surprise guest. 
I think we all just put a spoiler on the back of his van. <laughs> I'm not. No, I'm not, not going to tell you. But seriously, it's going to be someone that you want to hear from, most likely. Tucker got? Um, no, 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 no. Better than Tucker got. What? <laughs> yeah, Tucker got <Gott's> mom. <laughs> Tucker got some mom. No, seriously, it's gonna uh, it's gonna be a great uh, show. So yeah, tune in 8 p.m. Eastern tomorrow night. YouTube paramotor hangout or you could go to uh ppgshane.com you see you had to think about that yeah. like which one of them websites is it <laughs> there's, there's too, damn many. too many dot coms around <laughs> here <laughs> we can squeeze uh jim and um we got uh in april we got three openings still i'm working on he probably won't be home by then you should be you can go be back by then. Where he's going, I don't know. He may be down there when's, till June. when's the next just a tip? Eight, nine, ten, whatever number we're on now. When's that oh, come no. up? Uh, yeah, I'm I keep saying it's gonna be this week, this week, this week, but really this week. <laughs> this week. <laughs> really this week. That's he's right. at least 25% into editing. See, that's what takes so long. It's not really taking the videos, it's editing the damn things. Screw that, man. Yeah. Yeah. And and Will does a good job at it, so he can take as long as he wants. But hurry up. All right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we're we're uh we're all booked for March. So go Linda. Ooh, all right. Well oh, there we um, go. Uh, oh, um Run Into the Sky, our nonprofit organization. If you did not know, we actually had our articles of incorporation. Um approved on february 14th so we actually officially started on valentine's day how cool is that nice it is cool nice valentine's day so we're still just waiting on the uh, irs letter um and that will make us official and then we are going to be doing some custom tri custom paramotors for people that don't have arms or legs uh, disabled veterans we're going to be able to teach them how to fly uh, one of the cool things is from Air Sports USA down in Florida is that the trikes are custom. They're kind of like the PPCs. You've probably seen those on videos where you actually use your feet to steer the wing, right? And then your hand, there's a joystick that actually steers the trike. So if someone is missing a hand, they can still fly an ultralight, a paratrike. That's pretty cool. I mean, can you imagine, you know, uh, going to war and, and losing, you know, part of your one of your appendages or something and you really want to fly and you can't get your GA because uh, what, what kind of will because you're in GA, what are some of the restrictions? I mean, um, what do you have to do? You, you have to have all hands and fingers and toes to fly GA. Is there any restrictions on on, on anything like that or vision? First of all, I could not imagine wanting to fly and not being able to. So, I mean, that said it in a nutshell. Uh, as far as GA is concerned, honestly, I have had zero um, experience with uh, handicaps. So I really don't know. I know you have to pass a medical, you know, third class medical at the very least. Um, but as far as accommodations and stuff are concerned, I really don't know. That's a good question. So if, if, if for example, uh, I'm so it would be hugely expensive, I would imagine, if it could be done to retrofit an airplane. <clears throat> so I've never heard of it being done. Doesn't mean it hasn't been done, but I've never heard of it. We got I know some somebody that's got a missing leg. And I was like, hey, man, if you want to fly, you can get on the trike and boom, you can go. And he's like, no, I want my two feet on the ground. So I didn't push it any further. I was like, okay, if you don't want to fly. <laughs> It's only one what? One two foot. foot. Yeah. One oh, foot no. on yeah. Ground. One leg. One one foot. Yeah. You said two feet on the ground. <laughs> he did oh. say that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I totally missed. I said that. Yeah. Okay. I want to keep my foot on the ground. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, that's that's something too. If you think about it, you know, if you do trike, you need both feet to steer the front wheel. Yeah. If you're doing the the trike that you have, but a normal trike, you wouldn't. 
Yeah, I mean, a normal trike, you need both your feet to steer to the front. Well, not if you got one of them auto-correcting wheels that's got the spring on it. But if you need to turn left and you only have... Oh, no, a... if you need... Yeah, if you only have one leg right. for that, yeah, it could yeah. be difficult, yeah. yeah. I would imagine you'd have to have it to where you could pull and push, and you wouldn't. a lot of people don't have the strength to pull like that when the leg's not designed for that. That's when that joystick would come in handy, you know, especially right. if you only have one leg, you could steer with that. That'd be perfect. In yeah, Europe, but... because it has no rudder... Okay, so um, Brian Fran says that... Uh, well, no, I freaking lost it. Susan uh -oh. Simons, there's a woman. There's a woman who flies general aviation with no arms. Wow. And she flies wow. in Europe because it has no rudder pedals. It's hard to fly coordinated without rudder pedals, though, so I don't know how she's doing that. But where there's a will, there's a way. Seriously, if you want something bad enough. Absolutely. And this is definitely will be the the least expensive and you got dedicated people that you know uh, they also have the serenity island which is also a nonprofit down there and a lot of stuff that they do uh, air sports usa and serenity island in florida is fabricating different types of flying machines for people that you know are not able to fly the traditional type so i think this is going to be really good i can't wait to 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 be able to help a lot of people you know and and that's what this is all about is to to be able to help people get up in the air and i'm a disabled veteran you know i mean i, I mean thank goodness i have you know arms and legs but um it's it's difficult um and, and it's difficult uh, including with resurgence they don't get a lot of people that are able to go to class and if they do go to class there's no paramotor or any fly machines so what we want to do is to help resurgence ppg their people that already went to class find out what they need and help find you know help build fly machines that they can fly so you know i i think that when we originally said that we wanted to do something like like this um oh wow okay so let's take a look at this real quick so she is wow she actually crosses her legs so she's got to think about it in reverse at the same time yeah but wow. she does it naturally she's got one that one foot's on the throttle the yeah left foot's on the throttle the right foot she's got uh the yoke that's amazing man absolutely and thank you uh brian franz he he found this for us so yeah that is just incredible good for you good for you nice it's really neat too when when you're born without arms, your feet are you know, just like hands. I mean, they can do pretty much everything that we can do with our hands with their feet. I mean, I've seen videos of people that don't have arms, and they brush their teeth. You know, they they, they pick up forks, they they cut their steak and stuff. I'm like, gosh, I can barely slide my feet into a pair of shoes. You know, <laughs> I can't do anything. I mean. That that is absolutely amazing what people can do. It's yeah. oh. coming and becoming. Dropped his trike off a cargo rack on the interstate at seventy five miles an hour. I um he said one of his uh his buddy John guard guard service guardian service dogs his buddy John dropped his trike off a cargo rack on the interstate at seventy five miles an hour. I don't think that trike survived that at seventy five. There's no way it's probably destroyed it Gosh, wow. that's what i'm afraid of anytime i put my paramotor on a cargo rack i'm so worried it's gonna fall off so i strap the crap out of the thing i do the same thing i, <laughs> I yeah i i overdo it i mean it's a total <laughs> overkill yeah uh, better safe than sorry you know that's the way i see it I, i'd rather i know it even if it takes me longer to get it off of the cargo rack i know it was strapped down good while it was on while it was in motion huh it's either that or break it all the way down and put it inside which i may end up doing i know when i go to georgia in april i'll be breaking it all the way down to put it in the truck doesn't smart car brian does he break his down or he does he have a rack on his smart car well he uh he's got a truck now so he doesn't have the smart car anymore but i don't so i don't think he breaks it down 
Okay. He used to. He used to break it down and put it in one of those teeny, freaking teeny tiny cars. Yeah, but yeah. But, but he's still smart car Brian, regardless, he regardless what he flies. I mean, what he drives, you know, I don't care if you drive a truck, you're still smart car. Yeah, he got one of them good old boy trucks, but yeah, he's still smart car Brian. Forever. <laughs> I know, because if you change his name, we'll never know who he is. Yeah, right. <laughs> well guys if you can give us some thumbs up that really helps our metrics oh let me do that i didn't even thumbs it up okay there we go what i if know you, right i forgot if you if you don't like us and you put thumbs down make sure you hit it twice it don't matter you, everybody can hit thumbs down it still counts towards the metrics so it doesn't matter no you no know, thumbs twice yeah Think about it twice so it doesn't give a thumbs up, but then you it don't... doesn't give anything. Yeah, it, it's better to leave a thumbs down than nothing <laughs> yeah. because the metrics. Okay, um, where am I going in Georgia? Um, I'm actually going to basically Loganville, um, more towards almost Monroe, which is about 20 miles from Stone Mountain, Georgia. If you're familiar, uh, Kelby, um, with Georgia at all, I'm going that area which I think is a perfect fly zone. I don't think there's any air restrictions over there. There's one small private, I think, unmanned airport. So I should be cool to fly anywhere around there, which if we got good weather, I'm doing it. If that may be my first flight this year, <laughs> I'll just go down there and do it. Do I see Doug Hargis in the super chat? You do. Doug, you Doug. need to come back over here and hang out with us. We hung out. Yes. Yeah. Like uh, right before the pandemic in uh, 2019, was it uh, December or something like that? We were yeah. doing the, we we're doing the uh, para, God, what was it that we're doing? The the para, the geo something or what the hell was it? And uh, we had a blast down there. Um, it's been a long time, bud. You need to come on the show or come over here and yep. see me, man. It's been way too long. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to message, uh, I'm going to message you, Doug. So be ready. Uh-huh. You're gonna be be on be our guest on our show, Doug. Mark it down. I'm gonna private message you later tomorrow. Linda doesn't take no for an answer. No, nope. she does not, does she? No, nope. no. Nope. I got my calendar all ready to go, Doug. Uh oh, that's a big uh -huh. calendar. <laughs> you. <big> <laughs> As long as you can read it, that's all that matters. I, that's true. I've got like four calendars. Okay, I'm 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 a freak though. <laughs> it's like this way. If I forget to mark it on one calendar, I can find it on three more. <laughs> I, wow. I I have to admit I do the same thing, but I'm old school. I have to. All right, so guys, thank you so much for hanging out with us. Uh, we had a great show with John Hudson from True North Paramotors. We gave away a T-shirt. We gave away some stickers. Uh, we used the the secret code from last week was which was beast and next week what is the secret code Linda? What's the secret code Scuba Steve? Oh, True North. True North, excellent. So don't forget True North oh, is. The Will any more hints about your show tomorrow? <laughs> I know I keep I'm I'm like ready to get off the air just so I can see if you'll you'll say it off the Shane air. Shane won't get mad. Just go on and tell I us. Come on. I can't. I can't seriously, but I I think you'll enjoy it. I, I truly believe that. All right. So I got to make sure you go over to ppgshane.com tomorrow. If you haven't done so, hit that subscribe button and that bell notification. So when it pops up and you have an awesome guest, you know that it's there. Also, on, not, when, also on Wednesday, you got paramotorgirl.com at, I think it's eight o'clock, right? Seven o'clock? Yeah. Uh, well, eight. It's, it's eight Eastern and eight seven Central. Time. Okay, yeah. it pops up on my thing when, when she goes live, yeah, so I'll see that. Months. They're yeah, they're an hour behind me, so it's eight for me. Yeah. And then somebody like uh really special, their son does something on Thursday. We got the <laughs> right. here. That's right. What's Paragliding talk dot com with your host Robert Michaels. Yep, he's there every Thursday. We always have an awesome time. We always have the spinny winny wheel by Sean. He's the awesome spinny winny king. Not well, to be, not to be confused with me. Uh, king too, so I not not to be confused with me. I, I'm not the Sean. Nope. <laughs> Name spelled completely different. Sean N. Yes. 
And if you want to be a guest on my show, get up with me, Lindy Anderson, at Paramom USA, which takes you right to my Facebook page. And you can be a guest on our show. It can be your time to shine on Monday nights. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, mother's wax and all, you can be shining right there. Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. And then there's right. also a cool vaping slash paramotor show on Friday. Scooby Steve, tell us a little bit about that. Sir. Yeah, Friday, 8 o'clock, 8 to 10 Eastern Standard Time. Just go to paramotordude.com. That'll take you right over to my YouTube channel where you can watch. And I, we always have a good time over there. And, and I know yep. what Will's doing. Will's, Will's like... You know, you could die from something very serious right now. We'll tell you about it tomorrow. <laughs> I will tell you, I've listened to Steve's show, and I don't vape, but I want to <laughs> now. <laughs> See, now, I would never recommend, you know, I would never go, hey, you need to start vaping. That's, oh. you know, a lot of the cool kids want to do it just because they want to blow this big cloud this strictly was for me to get off cigarettes. I smoked 32 years. Um, if it wasn't for this, I'd probably be in the hospital with cancer right now. So if it helps somebody, great, which I know it's already helped a lot of people. And, and that's what I'm trying to do. Well, and it's no. more that's nicotine, right? So, I mean, you know, I, I'm like really into nicotine. So nicotine. The nicotine is not what the nicotine, nicotine's in potatoes. It's in tomatoes. It's in all kinds of stuff. It's the tar and crap and all the other 600 Six thousand chemicals they put in cigarettes. That's what is what kills you. Yeah. So yeah. And if you vape yeah. and it's uh, no wind in the morning, you can kind of see which way the wind's going. Oh yeah, it's a good it's a good wind sock. You can vape and blow a cloud, and it'll tell you yeah. exactly which way the wind's blowing. <laughs> Not this girl. I would like die. Oh, uh, yeah. If, if and I'll tell you when you uh, first start vaping, if you're a smoker, a smoker and I no plan on starting. <laughs> and you start vaping the first three days that you start vaping, you will cough your tail off. And uh, usually you'll cough up a lot of black crap that's in your lungs, oh, which nice. lets you know, hey, this must be helping. Oh boy. It does. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yes. This must be helping. I love it. Mm -hmm. It's like, are you a toker or a smoker? <laughs> 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 I would, I'm not even going to go back to the 70s because you know what? <sighs> yeah, before they had warnings. Yeah, it was fine to smoke back then. They had warnings yeah. on cigarettes. The yeah. wacky tobacco. Good stuff. I vape, but no nicotine. Yeah, see, some people, even if they smoked and they, they reduced to zero nicotine and they just like it for the flavor, which that's fine too. But, you know, I, I think Deweese used to smoke, so... If she can do it with zero nicotine, you can bring your levels down. You know, you can go from one milligram down, down, down till you get to zero. And then it's just strictly for flavor at that point. Yeah. So. And then why even smoke? Exactly. Excellent. You can smell, I can smell a cigarette smoker a mile away now. It, it's amazing how much it improves your sense of taste and smell. Food tastes sure. better, everything. Um, That's why when people it. stop smoking, they usually gain weight because they're like, ooh, food tastes good. I now. can testify to that fact for sure. I have definitely gained weight since I stopped smoking, definitely. So I'm going to have to go out there and kite my ass off to try and lose some of this weight. Well, well at, least you didn't go, at least you went to the vaping and not chewing. That's oh, so I, I could never do that. You know, I had some so-called friends that were like, yeah. Oh, you should dip. And they gave me a bunch of dip at uh, a carnival. Yeah. I was at a oh. carnival. So <laughs> yeah. I dipped and then they put me on one of them spinny rides. Yeah, that, that did not go well at all. I oh, was no. hurling <laughs> like crazy. <laughs> yeah, that was nice. bad. Boy, those are nice friends. They're oh like a Gravitron. <laughs> I got That's off there. I was so really. So I didn't know how much you're supposed to spit out of that. I'm spitting like crazy, but I swallowed a bunch and that got me. So, yeah, <laughs> that wasn't for me. No yeah. dip of any kind. Yeah. I know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, thank you. That, uh, yeah. It's so attractive, you know, go out on a date. <laughs> yeah. How you that's doing, babe? Have, that's why I have Coke bottles. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> she said, Believe yeah. Me. That is gross. Yeah. I've never yeah. Noticed, so. and, and, <laughs> and hopefully you don't go, let me have a drink of that, babe. Mm. Oh, 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 that. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. Oh, just yeah. the thought of that, man. <laughs> it, it just... It's just nasty. It's nasty stuff. To the max. Screwed to the max. Anyway, I just thought I'd bring that subject. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. Go to the rodeo, hang out with the cowboys, man. Now we're spitting. <sighs> like, Is it time for Shane's show yet? Damn it. All right, now. <laughs> <laughs> hey there, Walter. Walter, just in time for us to say Walter, goodbye. Walter, Walter. <laughs> well. Koala King. Walter, Walter. <laughs> let's uh, let's say goodbye to everybody, goodbye. and uh, let's do a private after show. Let's talk just a, a few minutes, and then we'll head okay. on out. Sound good? Sound yeah. good. Excellent. Well, guys, thank you so much for hanging out with us for an hour and a half. We talked with John Hudson from True North Paramotor, gave away some fun stuff. We got some secret codes. If you don't know what they are, you need to go back and listen. And we will see you tomorrow at ppgshane.com because there's a cool guest that you just got to go to. And so you don't mess up and you don't forget, go over to ppgshane.com. Right. Subscribe and hit that bell notification. I, I, I'm going to have to go and check this out because you're killing me, Will. You're, you're killing me, dude. <laughs> We're all in suspense now. Yes. Yeah, all right. All right. Well, y'all have a great evening and uh, don't forget Thanks, that uh, time flies just like paramotor pilots. And uh, if you want to run, make sure you run into this guy. We'll see you next week. What a wonderful, wonderful time. I had such a good time with you guys. This is fun. Yes. It's always fun. And now we're on the now we're on the audio only. So this is the okay. secret part. All so right, I'll quit. I'll quit waving now. <laughs> yeah. So, so for you guys that are still listening um what what can we do for for someone that's still listening and you know isn't here live but uh we get truckers that truck and they listen to this stuff all the way to the very end so what can we do for you oh i know what we can do hey guys i got three gift cards and i don't know what they are but they're between uh 25 and 100 dollar gift cards how about you just text me um 501-747-3558 with the word run into the sky and i will send you out some sort that's of that's the longest card. word i've ever heard but, but <laughs> takes but, me the word run into the sky <laughs> well i mean that, that's, the non, that's the non-profit you know and you know i got these gift cards that need to go out someplace just text me at 501-747-3558 uh run into the sky and then immediately after that your name and your mailing address and i'll send it out immediately sound good excellent you guys thank you so these much are for listening. Sealed. these are sealed gift cards right so not even you know what's in it sealed or 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 wait a minute wrong seal <laughs> yeah they're still sealed and i got three of them left so um sounds good thank you again for listening and we will see you next week have a good one peace out and uh, don't forget to run into the sky.